what's up YouTube so I've been doing a lot of testing out different magic find builds and I finally discovered the one the one build that can do 100% deli with 100% quant on your gear and not be able to tell the difference with any of the sentinels so before we get started I'm gonna go walk through a map real fast just to see how exactly this build works just in case people are wondering how exactly it plays so you enter the map first of all and then you play like a little bitch so burning ground not the greatest right so you want to try to hide in the corner a little bit you want to be as far away as possible and get the head on her buffs right there it was super fast to get the buff somehow so this is a pretty good scenario sometimes the map has some bad mods and it's kind of bad but basically then you just shield charge towards the boss and now you swap in your item rarity gem for trinity and now you are in action so you can see here the quant when you press divination this was 106 percent at around like 350 to 400% rarity. You are able to get more rarity if you use the Legion Jewel, Elegant Hubris. And I think you can get up to like 600% rarity or so with Perfect Gear. But as you can see here, right now I opened some box that popped my Sentinel, trying to infect as many mobs as possible. And keep in mind, this is 100% deli, and that is Omniphobia, and it just gets evaporated by Kinetic Blast. Like Kinetic Blast, hands down the best magic find build you could ever play being able to do a hundred percent deli maps like this with a hundred plus percent quant and nearly four to five hundred percent rarity is insane now pop the breach and kinetic blast just absolutely demolishes everything and the best part about this build is you can play it very easily starting off if you just have a head on her and you don't even need a mage blood, you just need a somewhat decent wand. I am using a physical wand in this video that's very, very good, but you can use an Ellie wand. You can use a lot of different options, and it should all be viable because head under, head under buffs are just that strong. And let's get straight into the build so you can see exactly how this character is built and why it actually does so much damage. So, this is actually a picture of the guy or girl. Now, the reason you can tell it's a magic find character is this shield. It's a Centauri's answer, which gives you 8% quant, and it is what allows Kinetic Blast to really shine as a magic finder. So, first off, you might be wondering why magic find and why even make your character weaker to get more loot. Well, you can get up to 100% quant, and you can get up to 600% rarity, maybe even more. What 100% quant means is that you find double the items and divination cards. If you actually play a character, with 100% quant, you will notice you will find a lot more raw exalts on the ground. I found probably 10 to 15 raw exalts yesterday just on stream, just for a mapping, and not that doesn't even include all of the divines or any of the other smaller currency you might find. And 100% quant also means that you'll probably find nearly double the amount of div cards. So you'll find more apothecary cards, you'll find more seven years bad luck cards, you'll find more lightning cards. And it's just extremely, extremely good. Quant is absolutely king. There's not really that much diminishing returns, I think. And it will feel really, really nice if you can stack as much quant as possible. You will never hear someone say they have too much quant. And even in standard, for the people who have like 200% quant with perfect legacy gear, they will notice that they get a lot more loot than the people on the temp leagues. Now, 600% rarity means that you'll find more Mage Bloods and Headhunters. So that means you'll find more Aegis Aurora's on the ground. You'll find more Meridian Jewels that could be Unnatural Instincts. Now, the bad part about rarity is there's really not that many Uniques that are worth that much money. You have Mage Blood, you have Headhunter, you have Aegis Aurora, you have Squire, and that's pretty much it for all of the Uniques you can find on the ground, uh, Unnatural Instinct. So rarity is not as big of a priority, it's more of a lotto thing, especially if you find a mage blood. Now because we do run, here if you look at it, we actually do run unique monsters drop corrupted on the sextant. And what this means is that a lot of times you find items, it might be corrupted. So rarity has a bad part there in that you might find a mage blood too flash corrupted like I did. Now... If you can clear as fast as a non-magic find build, then you'll pretty much make double the money. Especially, you have to think about it, a lot of your time spent preparing the maps is really rolling the maps. It's investing into the maps. And what this means is that it's scaled really well with map investment. If you have a map that's very high quant, very high pack size, if you have magic find on top with 100% quant, you're doubling something that's already very high. 
So that's why Magic Find is really good in terms of scaling with putting really good orbs on the map or going full out investment. Now, you might be wondering whatever happened to the Blade Vortex guy? The Blade Vortex guy looked pretty good. Well, if you saw the Blade Vortex guy and then you saw the KB guy, you will see that KB is miles better and it's not even close. So KB is, I believe, the best scaling skill in the game with Headhunter buffs. If you decide to go the Fizz route, you can shock him with the overlap. So you can see here, KB, when it shoots out, it creates little balls, right? Or it has to hit something. But basically, you can see these little balls that come up. So each ball could actually overlap. So KB is one of the few skills in the game that can actually shotgun. If you actually look here, you can see how big the balls are. So all of the balls are able to overlap and create these shotgunning pockets that allow the mobs to just get evaporated. So that's why KB is so good with walls is because when you hit the wall, it's able to create the circle. So it's only able to create the circle if it hits a mob or a wall or some sort of terrain. So that's why Crimson Temple is so good because there's so many walls and if you stand on top of the stairs, it actually makes it shoot out and every single projectile will create a ball. Now Fizz Conversion is used to take advantage of the Fizz's extra bust. If you look here, these are the Arch Nemesis modifiers that you can pick up. You have 50% of Fizz's extra fire damage, 50% of Fizz's extra lightning damage, and 50% of Fizz's extra cold damage. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so many more mods that gives Fizz's extra. So Fizz 1 is just extremely overpowered. Now... The nice part about using KB is the fact that you can actually still shield charge. And shield charge means that your attack speed is pretty fast with all the head under buffs. And this means that wearing a gold worm, which is only 10% move speed, will not feel as bad anymore. And that's how you actually make the build feel a lot better is by having a movement skill like shield charge. Shield charge feels amazing to use with soul eater stacks and attack speed. And it really makes you not miss out on gold worm as much. So you might be wondering, how do you actually get that much quantity? 106% seems like a crazy, crazy amount. So Gold Worm gives 20% quantity, 2x Ventor's Gambles, 10% quantity each for 20% quantity. Divination Distillate right here, 15% quantity with the Flask Effect nodes. Sedemas goes up to 10% quantity. Eyes of the Great Wolf goes up to 20% quantity. Centauri's Answer, which is a Shield, gives 8% quantity. And Grease Embrace gives 15% quantity. So if you look at the gear here, this is the mirror wand that I have. It's pretty good, pretty much perfect. I think it's 620 PDPS. I think someone might have made a better one already. But this helm right here is KB explosions on the enchant. And then you have reduced mana cost of attacks, which is actually pretty important because it makes KB only 13 mana. If you took off the helm, you would see KB is 24 mana, so it's really insane. And the reason why it's more than actual 26% is because it scales it before the inspiration. Uh, takes it into effect So right here we have this helm now this helm is fractured together with minion gems and rarity Now what you want with this helm because you want minion gems is you want to put your anime guardian in here Now I just haven't bought it, my anime guardian gear yet because he keeps dying Basically you run divergent anime guardian meat shield minion life and elemental army and that should keep it alive But I do think hundred percent deli. It is very sketch to run anime guardian regardless now this helm is not perfect. There is a prefix that could have rarity on it instead of this T5 defense roll, 5 armor, 5 evasion. Okay, we need to re-roll the helmet today. Now Centauri's answer, you want to look for as high of int as possible and then you want 8% quant. It's pretty much non-negotiable. Eyes of the Great Wolf, an anointed prism weave and you just want as much quant as possible. You can go for any attack damage roll but 20% and I just should probably buy a better Eyes of the Great Wolf but it's good enough for now. Breeze and Brave, you could get, you want to get as much quant as possible and as high of rarity as possible and everything else doesn't really matter. So this gives you 15% quant and 47% rarity. Now Ventor is 10% quant and it goes up to 40% rarity. So you pretty much just want as high of quant and as high of rarity as possible and as much resist as possible too. And the same goes for this. This is 10% quant and 35% rarity. These cost a fortune. I think they're like 35x each. Sedimas, you do have Ellie Weakness on hit, and you do get 10% quant. This costs around 18x or so, or 19x, I think. Gold Worms, you can get attack speed and cast speed if you've killed recently as the enchant. And you can also, if you really want to spend more money, you can get a Corrupted Pair with plus 2 auras or move speed or something like that. 
Uh, as always, head owner, you can use a rarity head owner, but they're very, very expensive and most people do not have them attribute catalyst. So it actually ends up being a little annoying to make all of your stats work. Now for the gold flask, you kind of want increased effect and rarity. I should not have rolled gain charges when you're hit by an enemy. It should have increased effect and you need to get the rarity craft. So the rarity craft is also on the helm. So this gives you 44% increased rarity of items dropped by slain rare or unique enemies. In Divination Distillate, you want 12% quant and as high of rarity as possible. So this also gets scaled by the flask effect node. So these nodes both scale it. So if you press both flasks, you can see here with the item rarity gem in, KB currently has 244% rarity. But if you press both flasks down, let's see here, it goes up to 353% rarity and 106%. Now there is something to know in that you can actually increase your rarity a bit more by using this jewel called Elegant Hubris. Let's see if I actually have one, okay. So you can slot it into a slot like right here and you can divine it over and over again. So if you put it right here, you can see that there are rarity rolls that you can hit. So this is gonna be 40%. Now if you have a really good one, you can probably get three of them. So you can get up to 120, 160% rarity on one of these Elegant Hubrises. But what this means is that you'll probably have to drop a few points in order to make it work because you have to waste some points and it makes all the other nodes do nothing. So these nodes do nothing. It's called price of glory or price of rarity. But I'm just using unnatural instinct because I actually don't prioritize rarity as much. So that's pretty much where you get all of your quantity and rarity from. So hopefully that gives a pretty good rundown on the gear you're looking for on making a magic find character. Now this is going to go into a little bit about the build priority and what I actually prioritize. So at the beginning of the map, always you have no head on or buff, so your character as is, your, is at your weakest state. So if you look at my character right now, it's pretty weak. The KB damage is nothing spectacular. The damage is honestly pretty bad in general. But if we look at it, the KB damage is still 82k, which is pretty respectable. It's not that low, it's not that high. But we're able to get a lot of damage and our damage is fully converted with the cold master here which is 40% fizz to cold and then you have the watcher's eye where is my watcher's eye right here 40% of fizz to cold here and then lastly we have 25% here 25% of fizz as lightning so that's where we get all of our conversion from so the, there's no fizz damage at all and this build is also pretty cool you can do fizz reflect and ellie reflect because you have awakened elemental damage with attacks and then there you do no fizz damage at all so it's a dream come true for the skill now secrets of suffering is the secret here actually kind of funny to getting max crit with zero investment so secrets of suffering converts all your cold damage to brittle and that gives you base crit chance and then you can scorch and sap so pretty much during the map you'll be able to shock them you'll be able to inflict scorch brittle and sap so it's very very strong and it allows you to get as much damage possible as early on as possible and you'll see that because you don't actually have that much base crit with this setup because you're not really investing that much into crit now in the middle of the map you did see i swapped out trinity for item rarity so what i like to do is i have trinity at the start as soon as i get the head under buffs i swap an item rarity and then you're good to go and that will allow you to have as much rarity as possible now you might be wondering what happens after you finish the map and you need to loot it and you have no more buffs so you want so there's two ways of approaching it you can make sure your map has zero mobs remaining or your character will pretty much die as soon as a mob looks at you so you can see here i actually have xp so it's pretty easy to level the character up now if you don't fully clear the map and you have like 10 mobs remaining chances are you will probably die as soon as the mob looks at you but what you could do is you could bring in the marauder so let's see here so this is the Marauder or the Strange Stacking Venom Gyre character who has been demoted to a looter. The Marauder looter. So he's kind of big. I like to use his chest right here. Probably not the best idea, but it makes him huge. So it's easier to see on the map. So basically this guy, he just runs around the map. You just get like four life flasks and just run around shield charge and pick up the loot. And it's a lot better. You have Enduring Cry on left click so you can regen your life. If there's like any bad stuff on the ground like burning ground or desecrated ground and I do think that this will make your life a lot simpler if you use another character to loot. Now you want to edit your filter to also be stricter so you spend less time looting and more time mapping and this goes along with 
efficiency for any build like you just want to be in your hideout less and you want to be spending more time mapping as much as possible and doing this will be a lot more fun to have another character to loot so you don't need to worry about dying while looting and being able to level up your character so now you might see here kb is the best skill for magic fighting i do think that i can say this without a doubt after testing out a lot of different setups the only other setup i think that could come close to rivaling it is maybe wind ripper with headhunter buffs but even then, I'm not really sure that's going to be possible. And you're definitely not going to be able to do 100% deli with Sentinels without even noticing how tanky the mobs are. This is the first build where I'm able to do any Sentinel I want. I can use the Ancient Stalker Sentinel, empower all the mobs, and KB will still absolutely shred the mobs. Biggest downside of KB is definitely how laggy the skill is, and buying the Celestial MTX is a big mistake. You definitely not... Well, you definitely do not want to buy the Celestial MTX if you want to use it in 100% deli maps. And it's kind of sad because I actually bought it. You could ask for a refund if you already have it. If you say that the skill is lagging you out and it's causing your computer to crash. And it does cause your computer to crash. And if you're doing the build, make sure to not hold down the attack button so much. Because holding it down allows the game to freeze up. And it may lead to your game crashing or dying. There's all these little caveats you have to do for juice maps because the game is just in a really bad state instead of in the in the terms of stability. Now playing with 100 plus quantity is kind of addictive and probably will make you never want to map without MF gear. And that's just something like kind of doing a drug or something. Like once you do it once, you can't really stop, which kind of leads you to a slippery slope because magic finding kind of really limits your build option. If you look at the build right here, Okay, if I log into my character right now, is that there's not that many builds in the game or skills in the game that can take advantage of using this much magic find gear and still clear it. Right now, this build is more a headhunter build than this anything else. I, I do know a lot of people hate on headhunter and say that's inferior to mage blood, but if you set it up correctly, I think headhunter is as strong as ever before because definitely people were not really magic finding 100% deli as easily as this. And this is more than just 100% deli. With the Sentinel damage reduction, it's probably like 120% deli or something like that. So definitely a GOAT skill. And I do think that everyone should try it out. KB is the way to go if you're trying to magic find. And I hope this helped you out in setting up your character. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Exalts, Mage Bloods, and Apothecaries than me. And see you next time. Bye.